Hi everybody, Father Bill Holzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, I have a couple things I want to share with you. The first one is the response to my bucket list question from last week, where I had 20 items, and of course the 20, 20th one was kind of a, uh, well, not exactly what you might have expected, because I asked you, the not, not the reader, the listener, the viewer, to to give me your ideas. And so that's what I got. I got several ideas and I wanted to just share them with you so you can add possibly some more. I think there's seven more to add onto that list, which makes actually 26, because that all was gonna fit in that 20th spot, or spot, and now we have more. So the first one that was given to me was to visit La Sagrada Familia, the Basilica in Spain, where it has been under construction for some 100 years, I think. Uh, Father Anthony was there briefly when he was in his Camino, doing his Camino kind of thing. Uh, and uh, I, I hear it's amazing and awesome. Another prisoner came and saw it, uh, and they talked to me just two weekends ago, and just it's one of the things you've got to see. So there you are. That's that one. And speaking of the Camino, the Camino is the pilgrimage walk from a place in France to a place in Spain, which ends in this one cathedral of St. James. And that's where St. James is buried in this cathedral. And that is a second item. That is this Camino, which you could say it's also a little asterisk about the third because it has that cathedral at the end. And then the next one was just to go to a first baptism or, excuse me, a first communion and or a baptism at Mass. And so at Mass, we don't have the baptisms typically at Mass unless you go to the Easter Vigil. So that means that's one for the Easter Vigil. But we certainly do have the bapt or the first communions at our our May time for you know I think it's around Mother's Day for our little ones around second grade or finishing up second grade for their wonderful first experience and that's it's delightful it's at all the masses very cute the next one is Notre Dame go to the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris France now I'm not sure if it's fully open yet but it's shortly to be open to the public as you might remember a few years back they had a almost catastrophic fire. And they have been, they've since then rebuilt using some of the main, same materials and same methods to try to keep the antiquity or the authenticity of the build um, in place. Uh, next one would be Chartres, France, the Cathedral of Chartres in France. And Deacon Brett's been there. So I think I believe it's at a, a um, not a uh, Romanesque, but a Gothic cathedral. And it's really beautiful. I've not been there. So you might check that out. And then two experiences. One was Perpetual Adoration. Yes, we should be going to Perpetual Adoration. If you've not, or just go to Adoration. We have it every first Friday or Saturday, and that would be this weekend. And you just go to the church. Now, you need to have a code, so you have to contact the office, etc. But you just go before the Blessed Sacrament in the chapel. We did have it briefly at some exposition and benediction where we took the monsters and blessed everybody at morning Mass. And tomorrow, we will do something similar as we then repose the Blessed Sacrament. So we move this Blessed Sacrament back into the main church uh, out of the day chapel, which again starts on Saturday in the morning. So we shut it down during the night-night. Night-night? The night. <laughs> and start it up again at 5 a.m. on Saturday, and then followed to, by Mass at 8.15. And that's when we uh, shut it down. And you can always go to our Blessed Sacrament Chapel, and maybe you have one local to you, wherever that may be that you're watching this video. And the last one was just a retreat. And I've said this myself many times, how important it is that every Catholic go on a retreat once a year because we need that. It's like an opportunity to really dig deep, kind of get out of the way of, or get out of the normal areas and, and distractions that we would have and, and just be focused and rest and be present to God as he can work through your heart and whatever's going on. So there we are, those are the additional bucket list things, uh, and I will hope that you might find some value in them. The second thing I'd like to mention is an event that I had today and reminds me of other ones I've had like it in the past, and that is doing a burial or a service for a baby that died in the womb, that a miscarriage occurred. In this case, the parents want to have a burial or some kind of service, and I'm just in awe of this because so many would just do nothing and just give it back to the hospital and just let it be put thrown away as, as bio waste. I'm like, no. And this family today, as well as other families that have been, have been involved with these things when they've happened, 
speak incredible truths to me through their tears as they're so heartbroken by what has happened. You know, they so wished and had hopes for this child to grow and to have, you know, whatever hopes they had in their minds for this child. And it's clearly not going to happen because the child passed away. But they don't just willy-nilly just go away and keep going and forgetting like it didn't happen. No, they actually want to spend the time and the energy to give this child a proper burial and with rites of prayers for the child. And this is awesome. It's so inspiring for me because of the reality that they are recognizing that the child is a person. The child was conceived at the moment of conception. And at that time then, of course, the child has rights, inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, as we hear. And that is so precious when I see this in these families who have struggled and had to walk through these moments of suffering when their children pass away in the womb, and the moms especially. So I'd ask that you'd pray for these families that have experienced this. Maybe you know some. Um, but their heroism and their statement, they're not trying to make a statement. They're just recognizing the reality before them that a baby, a person, not yet born, died in the womb, and they mourn this loss. And we mourn with them. And that mourning helps to deal with that grief. But it's a statement on top of all that, that life begins at conception. And these children are precious in our eyes as well as in God's. Folks, Think about these things. Say some prayers for folks that are in this situation. Pray for the children as well that have died before they were born. And I ask that you then also consider praying for those children who also died because of abortion. These situations I'm talking about are not abortion, but let's pray for the children who died through no fault of their own, but an act of the parent or parents. Um, pray for the parents who choose these things. Um, we don't want that. We want them to choose life. And you may not know somebody directly, but then we can always still pray. So please do that. Well, this weekend I will be preaching the homilies, and I'd ask for your prayers for me so that I can offer something cogent. But there's something that's connected with what I just shared that will be in the, the homily this week, and that is all of the events of our lives that are beautiful and honorable and things like that are also sacramentals, you might say, of God's presence to us. Well, where's God in these times? Well, he's there in many things, in our joys and our sorrows. And if we could just know that, maybe we'd be inspired more to have greater faith, or God would grace us with a greater uh, passion for our faith. But I don't want to get into the homily directly, but uh, please pray for me and pray for the folks who will be coming to Mass, that they will also receive some kind of... Uh, message or a sense of God's presence that, that God loves them, especially if they're hurting, if they're grieving in any kind of way, letting them know that we care and we want to walk with them. In the meantime, may God bless you, and I'll see you this weekend. Bye-bye.